Beyond any reasonable doubt, the new science is showing us that our hearts do much more than simply pump blood through our bodies. We can build a machine to do that. An artificial heart will pump the blood. But we now understand that our heart does much, much more than simply pump blood. That our heart literally has its own brain. It is called neural intelligence. And it is the heart intelligence that our ancestors understood that gives new meaning to the role of the human heart in our lives today. Our world, our physical world, is made of fields of energy, electrical fields, and magnetic fields of energy. I remember as a scientist understanding the role of electrical and magnetic fields in our bodies and our world and thinking, if we were ever going to interact with our bodies, if we want to heal our bodies, we want to create peace in our families or our communities, we must speak to the fields that connect all things. We must find a meaningful language, a nonverbal language that communicates with the stuff that this world is made of. And this is precisely the essence of our most ancient and cherished spiritual traditions. It is called the great secret of our past. It's the secret of the traditions that are taught in the monasteries of the mountains of Tibet, little villages in the Andes Mountains of Bolivia and Peru, all through the American desert southwest and North America and many of the ancient Asian traditions, as different as they are from one another. The bottom line, the through line, is that they're all speaking about an experience, an inner experience that we have focused on our hearts that allows us to deal with the changes beyond our bodies in the world around us. But what our own science now is, is showing us is that while our brain is certainly important and when I was in school, my textbook taught me that the brain is where the action is, that the brain, the brain is the master organ in the body. Well, interestingly enough, the brain is not the first organ that forms in the human body. It's, it's the human heart. And one of the great mysteries is what is it that triggers that first beat? In one moment in time, there is a mass of cells, and the next moment, something happens, and the heart begins to beat. Our own science today still cannot tell us definitively why our heart begins to beat, but it does, and it is the first organ in our bodies. And as the organ develops, it begins to regulate the chemistry through the rest of the body. And what we now know is that our heart sends the signals to the brain that trigger the chemistry in the brain that's released into the body. It's all based in the way we feel. The electrical signal, <clears throat> excuse me, the electrical signal between the heart and the brain is the key to understanding this relationship. When we are in what is called coherence, an experience that is measured as 0 0.10 hertz, 0 0.10 cycles per second, when we're feeling the feelings that allow us to experience 0 0.10 cycles per second, that is when our coherence is optimum. That's when we're sending the optimum signal between our heart and our brain. That's when our brain begins to release life-affirming chemistry into our bodies, healing chemistry, our immune systems, our strongly enhanced. Our anti-aging hormones such as DHEA increase 100% over a three-minute period of time just from having this feeling. So we know that coherence is good for us as individuals. In the presence of coherence, we become less aggressive, more peaceful, more willing to cooperate. What the science now is showing is that those experiences extend beyond our bodies into the world around us because the field of our heart is part of the world around us and connected with that field. So that when individuals can find a way to create coherence in their lives and become more cooperative, less aggressive, more willing to solve problems together, that that experience is transmitted in this field and others begin to find the same experience just because they're in that field without consciously doing anything else. What this means is that relatively few number of people that learn the language of the heart can benefit many people in our world. And I think it's no accident that this science that bridges our most ancient and cherished spiritual traditions is being revealed only now at the end of this 5,000 year long cycle when the best minds of our time tell us that we are facing the greatest crises 5,000 years of recorded human history. How beautiful, how beautiful 
that as we face the crises that threaten our existence, we also remember the language of the human heart that heals the separation that's led to the crises. I think it's no accident that both are happening right now. And this, I believe, is the power that leads us and changes our path, our trajectory from one of destruction to one of rejuvenation as we end this great fifth world age and find ourselves now at the beginning of the sixth world age of humankind.